ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travis, and this is The Leader. Is time running out for Nadim Zahawi? That any politician who seeks to avoid the taxes they owe in this country is not fit to be in charge of taxpayer money. Yeah. It wasn't the easiest PMQs for Rishi Sunak, as he had to face tough questions again about the controversy surrounding the Conservative Party chairman head-on. The issues in question occurred before I was Prime Minister. With regard, with regard to the appointment, with regard to the appointment of the Minister without portfolio, the usual appointments process was followed. No issues No issues were raised with me when he was appointed to his current role. And since I commented on this matter last week, more information has come forward. And that is why I have asked the independent advisor to look into the matter. Mr Zahawi is fighting for his political life amid claims over his tax affairs. The Prime Minister says the investigation he's ordered from ethics advisor Sir Laurie Magnus will provide the answers. But can Zahawi ride out this storm, or are his days as chairman numbered? David Bond is the Evening Standard's deputy political editor. Yeah, it certainly was a a tough uh, PMQs for Rishi Sunak. Keir Starmer, leader of the Labour Party, asked if any politician who seeks to avoid taxes should be in charge of taxpayers' money. That was his opening question on that. He then went on to say what has changed between last week when Rishi Sunak said that the whole matter around Nadim Zahawi's tax affairs had been addressed, and this week when he launched an investigation by his ethics advisor into the matter, and then finished off by saying it all showed how Rishi Sunak was being overwhelmed. And in perhaps the spikiest exchange of PMQs said if uh, Rishi Sunak was wondering if the job was just too big for him. Now, Rishi Sunak's position, which has evolved quite a lot over the last few days, it has to be said, is sticking to the line and stuck to the line in PMQs that since he made that comment last week that the matter with Nadim Zahawi had been addressed in full, new information had come out. Nadim Zahawi himself on Saturday issuing that statement in which he said uh, that the issue had been settled with HMRC about this tax dispute. And so in light of that new information, he had now asked Sir Laurie Magnus, the independent ethics advisor, to look into the matter. And that it was right now, despite Labour calling for him to, to sack Zahawi, it was absolutely right that due process should now be followed. Rishi Sunak has officially been in the job for three months now. How will his handling of the situation be coming across to his party and the public? Well, it is a big test for him. There's no doubt about that. It sort of conjures up memories of the the last days of the Boris Johnson regime. It, you know, has that feel of, oh, more, you know, more Tory sleaze about it. And during PMQs, both Keir Starmer and the SNP leader, Stephen Flynn, tried to connect what was going on with Nadim Zahawi to questions about Rishi Sunak's own tax affairs. Of course, you know, in the past, he's faced these claims around non-DOM status and questions about the tax affairs of his family. So opposition MPs are very keen to sort of put the Nadim Zahawi story in that broader context context of both conservative, you know, questions over conservative integrity, but also Rishi Sunak's own wealth and his own tax affairs. So it does become quite difficult for him. He obviously doesn't want to be talking about this. He wants to try and move on. He wants to try and shift the focus onto the economy and some of the other things that the government is doing. So to have this playing out is extremely uh, a big problem for him at the minute. For those who aren't aware of the situation, can you just give an overview of the controversy surrounding Nadim Zahawi and his tax affairs? Yes. So uh, there's been reports for quite some time now that there was this issue around Mr Zahawi's tax affairs. And then at the weekend, he actually admitted that he had settled an alleged tax dispute with HMRC connected to shares in the polling company YouGov which he co-founded back in 2000. Now, Mr. Zahawi has insisted that any error over his tax affairs was careless and not deliberate and has insisted that the the issue uh, has been resolved. Now, the BBC has reported that there was a penalty involved in this tax settlement, which is 
been reported around the sort of 4.8 million pounds level, though those figures have not been confirmed. But it's this this point that actually a penalty was paid as part of settling this tax bill, which has really led to these extra questions which Nadim Zahawi is facing. And that's why Rishi Sunak has ordered this investigation by his ethics advisor, Sir Laurie Magnus. When can we expect a result from the investigation? Well, we don't know. Um, Number 10 says that they want the matter to be resolved as soon as possible. Of course, you know, Labour and other opposition MPs are saying, why do you even need an investigation? You you probably know enough already, but why don't you just talk to Nadim Zahawi about it? And there is this big question about what Rishi Sunak knew and when, because obviously last week he was saying to MPs that the matter had been cleared up in full, and then subsequently he's asked the ethics advisor to look into it. So he is now saying, he's insisting, look, now I've set the investigation up of vast lorry magnus to look into it. it is right that it now follows due process and is allowed to follow follow its course so we don't know when it will be resolved some opposition politicians have said that this is just a case of the government trying to kick it into the long grass take the heat off it and play the long game but with every day you just feel that the position is becoming more and more difficult for for nadim zahawi today we heard from david gorg former justice secretary and uh, treasury minister saying that Rishi Sunak should probably be encouraging him to go, sort of talked about how difficult it was for him to remain in post. We also also heard from Dominic Grieve speaking on Newsnight last night, talking about probably him needing to resign as well. So the pressure is definitely growing, lots and lots of questions still being asked, uh, and it is difficult to see how much longer he can hold on for. But the hope is, Rishi Sunak's hope is that by having this independent investigation, it at least does buy him a bit more time. Let's go to the ads. Stay there to hear from our commissioning editor and senior feature writer, Katie Strick, about Nadim Zahawi's background, life and career so far. Welcome back. Katie Strick is commissioning editor and senior feature writer at The Evening Standard. Katie, you've been looking in more detail at Nadim Zahawi as a person. He didn't have the easiest start in life, did he? No, he had a very unusual upbringing for an MP. He was actually born in Baghdad in Iraq to very well-connected Iraqi Kurd parents and grandparents. Interestingly, his grandfather was the governor of the Central Bank of Iraq. He and his family moved to the UK when he was 11, which is something he's referenced in many, many speeches over the years and how he arrived here not being able to speak a word of English. Um, And he was bullied when he first started school, which is something that he has talked about a lot, especially when he was education secretary many years later. So, um, yeah, that really shaped a lot of his policies in that role. He put a big focus on teaching respect in in schools and tackling bullying. And um, the government provided more than £2 million to anti-bullying organisations when he was um, education secretary. What do we know about him as a person in general? We know that he is one of the UK's richest MPs and he made the majority of his money in oil and business before he entered politics and also through property. So he is married to a woman called Lana and they have three children together. Um, But it is their property empire, his and Lana's property empire, that um, has made the majority of their money. So it's um, reportedly worth around £100 million and they have five homes worth £17 million, three in London, one in Warwickshire and one in Dubai. So it's hardly surprising really that many um, commentators have been very quick to draw parallels between him and Rishi Sunak, who is now his boss as Prime Minister and was his predecessor as as Chancellor. Something he and Rishi Sunak also share is their background in business. And so a fun fact, fun interesting fact is that at one point in his business career, he found himself selling t-shirts and Teletubbies merchandise to um, retailers including M&S. He actually also went on to found the um, polling company YouGov with fellow Tory Stephen Shakespeare in the year 2000, which was floated on the stock market five years later. So that's also how he made quite a bit of his money. How did he transition into politics? His political career was already going on at this time. So it began in 1991, but then he became an advisor to um, the novelist and former Tory MP, Geoffrey Archer. So Archer later helped campaign for um, Nadim Zahawi um, for his seat on Wandsworth Council. So he worked his way up and he was Conservative councillor in Putney and then Conservative MP for Stratford-upon-Avon, which he still is today. But it was his stint as Minister for Vaccines in 2020 during the pandemic that sort of is where most of us, that's certainly where I started um, 
hearing about him a lot more. So that was where he sort of gained this reputation for being quite a safe pair of hands. And that's what got him his next gig as education secretary, replacing Gavin Williamson. And then he was on to chancellor after that, but only for two months. And from what you've learned about him as a person and his career, do you think he can survive this controversy? It's interesting. He was always known as a bit of a safe pair of hands and that uh, sort of amongst the Tories when he was Minister for Vaccines. He's come out um, since to say it was a careless but not deliberate mistake. I know that's a very common line that a lot of people use, a lot of MPs use when when these um, these tax scandals come out. So it's whether, whether he can weather that. Many other MPs have. So we'll see. I think he'll probably keep his head down. It's been quite interesting that this new investigation into his tax affairs is being led by this new ethics advisor, Sir Laurie Magnus. So commentators are already calling him the new Sue Gray. And I know that when Sue Gray's report had or investigation had begun, that became the the line, didn't it, that Tories were using whenever they were asked about it. They just said, oh, we're waiting for Sue Gray's report. So will it become we're waiting for Laurie Magnus's report? Will he be the new Sue Gray? Quite possibly. And that's it from The Leader. This podcast is back tomorrow at 4 p.m.